What's up everyone? It's your boy G and we are going to be installing some clutch packs on the Ninja 400. It's actually the thing I've been kind of dreading to be completely honest. I never really liked doing clutch work but because this is a bike should be a little better. Should be a little easier. I don't have to get underneath the car. I don't need to drop an engine or drop a trans or anything. Front subframe because on the side of the bike, there's the uh, clutch cover. It's already there. That should be pretty easy to do. Right now, I got the Burnett Heavy Duty Clutch Pack and the OEM Steel Plates soaking in oil. I'm gonna do that overnight. And tomorrow afternoon, my buddy Dan should be coming over. If not, I'm gonna be installing this by myself and learn on the way. This will be a learning experience either way. And let's see how bad these clutch packs are from the bike. The reason why I'm switching out the clutch packs and the uh, the, cl the clutch springs is because they are very weak from the factory. Not the clutch pack per se, it's the springs that causes the, uh, the problems. It's, um, it's these things. These is what's going to push the clutch in and I don't know if someone can correct me in the comments below of like what clutch springs specifically do because this is new to me uh typically when i install a clutch in a car it's already assembled this is a whole pack instead of having separate plates all by themselves and having to soak it over in oil makes sense they're wet clutches clutch springs from the factory are really weak really 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 weak if you are a fast rider and you try to full throttle it from high speed say 60 70 minimum and you want to pass a car next thing you know you twist it you get your rpm shooting up bike's not really doing anything but making sound then it finally catches what you're actually doing from what i read and from my understanding is that you're actually burning up the friction material for the friction plate when you're holding it and the rpms are shooting up and hi how are you say hi chloe say hi every time you do that it rubber bands and you're not going anywhere stop just stop let go of the throttle you are burning up your friction plate your friction material is probably gone uh not gone gone but you're burning them away we'll see what my friction plates look like after we pull it out of the bike because i doubt they look pretty good because i've been kind of ragging on it trying to pass a car in the passing lane it's kind of embarrassing when you hear his noise nothing nothing we'll skip over to tomorrow and hopefully dan is here with me if not it's just gonna be me working on the bike which is fine it's a learning experience either way and hopefully y'all get something from this too all right let's jump to tomorrow it's the good news what's that Shit. Hmm. It looks like just normal wear and tear. So, then going to lose that. I guess you're supposed to do it one at a time, yep. slowly. Yep. And because they're spring loaded. Yeah. So. And there's a lot of, a lot of pressure on them too. <laughs> yeah. Run here. Sit. One. I'm really curious of like how, how the, how my clutch packs look after two and a half, two to Run. two and a half years of riding. And on Sit. the Motul. And um, well, I've been using the Kawasaki Sit. oil since I moved up here because yeah. it's cheaper. Oh. It's so much cheaper than the Motul oil. <laughs> Gonna... I don't know what the process is behind this, Perfect. but I'm just going to do just a quarter turn to each one. I can literally see the plate moving. So is this the pressure plate? Yeah, this should be the pressure plate. Well, there's friction plates and then the, cl the clutch pads, clutch plates. This is the pressure plate that sits on top of the, the springs. Okay. Isn't this tool sweet? This is pretty nice. It's expensive though. It's like $38. That's for the quarter inch drive. That's it though? Yeah. Like, 
Come on, like look at the ease of this. I want to get the three eighths to uh, because the quarter inch is obviously four quarter inch yeah. sockets. Man, that's that's a long ass bolt. Yes, they are. Three long bolts. <laughs> that's what she said. Sometimes. What does that even mean? <laughs> then three three long bolts. That's what she said. Yeah. What? <laughs> So right. when you ask her if you want to go get some dicks, and she's like, yeah, I want some, I want a bunch of dicks right now. And you're like, burgers. Just let everyone Bur know, burgers. here in Washington, we have a, <laughs> we have a burger chain called Dicks. <laughs> and it's the biggest, like, thing here in Washington to make a joke of, like, you want to get some dicks, bro? Or go eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I swear, I swear, it's, it's called Dicks Burgers. Just look it up. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna fast forward to. So here's the. Are you serious, dude? You better go. So here's what comes of it. They're pretty long bolts, and here's the springs. And whack. Take take them out slowly. Whack. And whack. You have a heavy duty clutch spring, you're not gonna use them. You might as well just throw them away. Yeah. And I think. Okay, so. We don't have to pull that off. Right. Uh, it's literally the whole unit right now. Okay. Okay. So this this is where it starts to get like. Oh, you know what's nice? Look at all. Look at it. 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 Check your teeth. Make sure your teeth are good. I don't, I don't see any like I don't see any metal shavings or anything down here too. And you're at what eighteen thousand miles now? So <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty good. Eighteen thousand miles for a two-year bike. You you can tell I ride a lot. Teeth look pretty decent still. Let's, let's pull that. Oh yeah, here it is. Chain tensioner, I think. Thanks. Uh, I think so. I think that's what it is. That's what he's looking at. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So this, this is where it gets a little messy and fun. It's my mom vacuuming for like the fifth time today. Uh, all right. So we got this whole bitch is gonna come out right. And. As Dan told me, you gotta pull, you gotta pull them out and stack them, and for your new clutch plate, stack them exactly how they were pulled out. So you gotta pay attention to your clutch plate layout. Yeah, it all, it all depends if you're reusing anything that you're like pulling out, or if you're just putting in brand new ones. But like, you just gotta make. And then there's still a clip in here. I think that, yeah, that clip stays there. Yeah. It's the clip he's talking about, but clutch plates are out. They don't look that bad. They? But this is like, this is like your last. Oh one, no, so. you can see some. Yeah, we're gonna go, burn. we're gonna go bring it to the table real quick. <laughs> this is why we need to start our business, man, and so we can get some money for a shop. Yeah. Look, we already got our Ducatis we're working on right here, too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah, you can see it. It's burnt. Need quite a few places yet. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's, oh, that's yeah, pretty those, bad. Those are gone, dude. It's like, this one is good. That one's stacked up higher than well, it's some like, of It's all about, like, the thickness of it, really. But honestly, that just looks pretty good. Yeah, that one. So this that one right here... Bad. So the one I noticed the most is this area right here. It's a lot thinner than the than the others. But yeah, you can see it's it's on its way out. Mm -hmm. So looks like it's a narrow ring, narrow clutch plate. Well we gotta Where's, where's your new ones at? That's, that's a good question. To the engine. This side. 
Okay. Facing engine. So narrow facing engine. Yep. Right. Here's the friction plate that's supposed to go in between. Oh, that's a steel plate. The steel plate. Yeah, this that's is the, the friction plate. Yeah. So that one is. Ooh. Stuck. You see the. Uh, Doesn't look too bad friction material just kind of imprinted on it. <laughs> yeah. So narrow, narrow. Then there's a wide. See the difference though? Yeah. Like vast difference. Super vast difference. Vast difference? Vast difference in, in the sizing. Okay, we just need to remember this is for <clears throat> engine side, friction plate facing engine. Mm -hmm. Then there's another wide pl wide OEM plate. These plates look really good still. The steel plates look really good. Still. I think the steel plates would be fine. It's That's just good. The... It's it's these ones that get worn down. Yeah. Honestly. But while you're in there, you might as well just replace everything. Yeah. Make it all brand new. So we got narrow, wide, and then there's a, looks like another set of wides. These ones look pretty thick still. Yeah. But. I see uneven. <clears throat> looks like a little uneven wear. Yeah. You see that too a little bit? Yeah, I see that. It's a little uneven. What is Brody doing? He's probably taking it. Because the first one was a test. It's like, can I go? Can I go? What? Getting in trouble. Oh shit. <laughs> Changing out That's the clutch. Like trouble too, huh? <laughs> it smells like oil. So I think the clutch materials are just wearing unevenly because of those clutch springs at high RPMs. Yeah. Prime example right here. Okay. Oh, no, maybe that was just the look. That was just the look. I know, it's hard to capture on camera, but what we're seeing here is uneven wear of the friction material. So we end it with a friction plate to the, what do you call this piece? If anyone knows, just put in the comments. <laughs> I think it's for, I Clutch plate cover? Well, yeah, I guess, I guess it's a clutch plate cover. Clutch plate. So. I mean, it holds the springs in with the, yeah. the clutch material. So to. Hey. Hey. So we yeah, got there's... narrow, wide, wide, narrow, narrow. And just for repetition, so I don't forget, we don't forget, narrow, wide, wide, narrow, narrow. Yeah. This side towards Vast the engine. Vast difference. And you, this one's burned up the you most. You can tell it is too. Look at all oh, that goody goody two shoes right there. Yeah, that's burnt up the most. Mm, that's the, that's those plates getting getting rubbed up on something on here, like one of the friction plates or something. Yeah. The steel plates rubbing up on the friction plate here, and it's just it's just caught just up. Rubbing. It's telling me that like. You're better off just buying brand new steel plates because, you're, as I said to him too, you're you're already in there. You might as well just just do it just just because. And yeah, they're soaking in there. That's uh, good. I mean, that's, it's just gonna be really messy to put them in. Yeah. So you're supposed to soak them, right? Uh, yeah, because you want to get them like like pre-lubed. Okay, so that's yeah. the whole purpose of it because it is a wet, multi-plate wet clutch. Yes, and if you put them in dry and then it's it's all about pressure. So you're you're putting them in dry and then you're putting all the pressure onto them and then when you put the liquid in, mm -hmm. where is it going to go? Oh. It can't go in between it already. Because they're already bunched in there. Yeah. Like okay. once once it starts warming up, this the the plates will start 
you know, right. moving a, a, away from each other and stuff. But like, well, it's cold like that, and then all the pressure's there. Mm -hmm. You're it's you're just looking at a, a, a bad, uh, right? Bad connection, like a bad. Right, it's, make, it's just no contact with. Yes. Okay. And and uh, don't you see, see those clutch. see those black spots? That's the friction plate. And compare it to that's the friction material right there. But compare it to the OEM one. I, I <laughs> this is gonna grab. This is gonna <laughs> grab. It's gonna grab like really tough. So not only I got the heavy duty uh, Barnett spring clutch, uh, clutch springs, I got the heavy duty Barnett um, friction plates. So that yeah. <clears throat> so this little four hundred is gonna grab like a big bike. Yeah. Well, that's the whole purpose I've been doing all these modifications to this 400 is to make it like a big bike. Yep. He's ready for inspection. Oh, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Where did she come from? She, she dropped it over here, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't even remember. Okay. Now we got to put it, we got to lay it out exactly the way we pulled it out. And just like I said, to remind myself, narrow, wide, wide, narrow, narrow. Right. And so we got these like really thick ones down here, right? So which? Yeah, so you gotta sort through them. I, I had it organized. So you can, you can tell which ones are narrow and which ones are wide. These are the narrower ones. Yeah. So I feel like these ones would go here. Wait, how how did we pull it out? <laughs> well, here, well, here's the thing. Do you remember? Do you is remember there, the clutch? Is there two big ones? Yeah, yeah two okay, big ones, so three two, small ones. Two big. So the two big ones are gonna be these two. Yeah. <clears throat> these three little ones are gonna be these three. Yeah. That's that's how it's gonna be. So I'm gonna use one of these ones as one of my first ones then. Then, the steel plates are actually in the bottom right here. Okay. I don't think there's. A specific to this right now. No. Because look. Man, those those friction materials. <laughs> yeah. I'll hold this. So we don't get oil everywhere. I had to sacrifice some oil, man. <laughs> That's the shitty part. So we'll cut back to when it's all fully assembled. Can you eat the uh, foam patsy? Oh, yeah. I already made it. Oh. I know how to make the foam patsy, break it. Remember, we lived in Japan for 18 years. Yes. Well, my parents longer because my dad was stationed in Japan for ever. I made pork. Do you eat pork? Pork? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I eat. I eat. Dan needs anything. Yeah, yeah. He's not picky at all. And if I haven't tried it, I usually... So the heavy-duty clutch springs are on, plates are on, and we just slowly and evenly One. tighten them up. One. Don't go tighten one bolt really fast. One. Just slowly and evenly so they have equal One. pressure. As equal pressure as you can get it. I'm literally just doing one whole turn, each one, that's all I'm doing. So we'll fast forward to when we have it all in there. So there we go. Is it clicking? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go around again just, just in case, because these are really critical parts. <laughs> made the mistake <laughs> so see if I could remember this short-term memory <laughs>
double check measurements before you torque down. <laughs> So that's it. That's so, it, ladies and gentlemen. All we just need to do is just close her up, fill her up with oil, and then run her for a little bit. So, I looked up this the clutch, the torque specs for those uh, <laughs> clutch springs, and according to Norton Motorsports, they had like two different measurements. So the first one I looked at was ninety-seven point four uh, pound feet of a uh, torque. Our foot foot pounds. This is where it's gonna get a little and, um, tricky now. We were looking at each other and we're just like, that can't be. That's like the same. That's like the same specs as the uh, as the rear axle. I mean, I know these. I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, okay, <laughs> all right. If that's what the instruction says. <laughs> I like, oh, that's what I'm Fortunately, I looked up the right one, and it's uh, what was it again? It was 89 inch pounds. 89 inch pounds. We went with that. That seems more feasible because 97 on a t little quarter inch 10 mil head. It was no 10 mil socket wasn't going to do it. <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to close her back up and I'm going to have to put the camera down and hold it. Oh, well, there's a dowel no, pin. No, I need to I need the, I need the fish the center piece. Oh, for so what he's first. What he's um, talking about is this this arm right here, the actuator arm, and he needs to um, get that centered. Otherwise, I'm gonna put this in and there's not gonna be any actuation of the clutch. Yeah. Then I think these require just, they don't require any, I looked up the, I looked up the forums. I don't think it's a break in, you just have to turn it on and make sure it shifts. Like in the gear. And good thing we are, it's on a rear stand. Exactly. We just have to open up the door so we don't need to get some carbon monoxides. Yeah. But while he's messing with that, we'll cut forward. <sighs> <laughs> so right now, I already, <sighs> I already put all the bolts back together, put Ooh. the clutch spring back together. Now we just need to readjust the clutch. Yeah, yeah there like it goes. a lot. There we go. Now a it, lot. So. Cause it's, it's now she's super it's sloppy. She's super loosey goosey. Slappy to me. So we adjust the clutch from the engine side. Always do from the engine side. Get your slack. Yeah, you want this? Double team and Riley here. Yeah. And up here. Oh, Billy. <laughs> so. This is what you want to do, buddy. You want to pull this out because there's a lot of rust buildup on here. And oh. you want to maybe you want to clean that off real quick. Give it a little, uh, um, uh, this a little bit right here. That, that is pretty rusty. Yeah, it's 18,000 miles. <laughs> you know. It's not my fault. I like the ride. It's your fault either. It's not my fault that Kawasaki made a really good bike. I showed up to work on my bike, and my buddy David was like, he's like, God damn it, you're making me feel like a bitch because I'm not riding right now. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, dude, I was like, it's all good, man. <laughs> so story time. When I got the bike, Dan rode it home for me. Yeah. And this is when I first bought the bike at Linwood Motoplex with... Let's let's just admit now that that wasn't a good deal. Eight thousand dollars out the door, and that was two years ago. Granted, it came with it came with the it, uh, the windscreen, the frame sliders, and the actual yeah, it came with that. But you know, I could have just bought that on my own. But the more we think about, it, I was like, well, I'm gonna get those parts anyways. Yeah. So not even like a day later, I told Dan, hey, I'm gonna go ride the bike. This motherfucker. <laughs> I, I, I was like, I told my wife, I was like, look, I'm going to go ride tonight. I was like, Gian's going to go ride. I was like, I'm not going to go let him ride by himself after he just got this bike. Like, and especially at night, like. You know, <laughs> so we went riding. I was waiting for him and then we went out riding and then he was just surprised. I was like, oh, he's not staying in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told him, like, we can go wherever you're comfortable. So we went all around 
the town I was living in in Arlington. And then it just progressed from there. I wasn't even like, I think like what, a week later, I was like, hey, I'm gonna take the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Still, still well, well, remember, we won't get an accurate measurement until the bike's on. Oh, still some slack? Yeah. I thought you adjust the slack by uh, moving it this way, right? You're moving it that way? We're going to take a look ski here. Unless that cable's just stretched now. In all honestly, honesty, I'm just comparing it to what my bike feels like, so I shouldn't be doing that. And just for anyone who doesn't know, he has a 2021 ZX6R that he just got back up and running. Yeah. Tell, tell the story of how it went down. <laughs> uh, I was like riding home one day on four or five, and I noticed my reservoir was like a little bit low, like lower than usual. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, that's weird. And then I felt this, I went to do a pass and I felt this like really weird sluggish feeling. Oh. And it was like, huh, oh, that's weird. And, uh, you know, just kept on going and thought nothing of it. Yeah. Looked down, I'm like, oh, it's hot outside anyway, so it's running a little warm. Right. And then I get off my exit, and as soon as I get off my exit, it's like, it's like puttering, and then I, I start to smell the coolant too, and I'm like, that's weird. Oh, no. I was like, no way is this my bike. Like, oh, no. Like, no way. It's like, a, it's a brand new bike. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's only so, one year old. Yeah, so I like, I turned, I turned on um, to my street and stuff, and as soon as I made it to the stop sign, or the stop light, uh, I, that's when I saw the smoke coming from, oh. from down here, and I was just like, fuck. And so I just, whoop, I just rode straight home. Yeah. And and just turned it off in my driveway like as soon as I could. So like luckily I had like the air cooling on the on the ride home. Right. But like the second that it was gone, it was like starving. Oh, cooling. and ladies and gentlemen, that's is why I got a radiator guard. And yeah. now Dan has a radiator guard. So yeah, so what happened was this like this rock had penetrated the radiator. It was still lodged in there. Yeah. And, oh wow. And uh, it it had it had ruptured. Oh I don't know. no. So I don't know if it was from that exact time, or if it was already lodged in there. Right. And if it just like worked up over time, uh, and finally like got stressed out. That's enough. so bad. But yeah. So I got I didn't buy a brand new one, but I bought a new one off eBay, and it was like two hundred and thirty bucks. Oh yeah, seven hundred fifty. Plus, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Just let you, anyone know who wants to also get a radiator for the bike if for a Ninja Four Hundred. It's in the radiator garden. Yeah, <laughs> it's no. but for the Ninja Four Hundred, the radiator is also like a few dollars off from the ZX Six R's radiator. Yeah, OEM price. Really close, which is surprising to me. All right, we're gonna adjust the clutch, fill her, and then we're gonna fill her up with oil.
Okay. She runs. Just uh, I won't be able to know when the uh, how the clutch pack is going to feel until I get her on the road. But I don't smell that exhaust leak because this is where the exhaust leak is actually happening. The bike's already warm. If you can see the damages. So we're finally done. That was not as bad as of an install that I thought it would be. No. It wasn't really that bad. You just gotta take your time. Really take your time, especially with those clutch bolts, yep. the clutch spring bolts. Yeah. Really take your time. And especially take your time <laughs> with the plate covers, uh, the, the friction plates and the, and the steel plates. Take your time and just memorize, take a picture, draw it out, whatever. Yep. Those steel plates had two different sides, one one machined edge and one like beveled edge. So, so like, you gotta make sure that they go in the same direction. Yeah, and so however you pulled out your friction, your, your clutch your clutch pack, put it back the same way you did, you, oh, yeah. you put it in. So Dan, what do you think about that install? It was like a eight out of 10. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't really it's that pretty, bad. It's pretty easy. Pretty it's easy. Messy. This <laughs> is really, really messy. Really oily and messy, but I mean, yeah. that's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys, that's that's it. So, we'll catch you on the next video.